Welcome to Tony Talk. Welcome to Tony Talk. What up, y'all? This is Attorney Antonio Moore coming to you from Tony Talks. We're going to get right into the discussion. You know, I'm going to talk about this Kendrick Lamar, they not like us chant that people are using. It seemed like it initially talked about lineage and ADOSness, but now has mutated into otherness. And I don't know what was going on, but we're going to talk about it. Let's get to it. So, um, you know, because the event was watched, I tuned into the last part of the pop up. I'm from the West West, but like some of what was going on, I, I'll talk about my own views in a second. Everybody has a right to their own perception. I'm a middle aged man for the kids, for the kids. But when I see them old folks out there living in their 90s again, it's a lot. It's a lot. But, you know. If you a hip hop head, you was at Project Blow, and for those people on the West, they know about that. That's where Ski started. You know, shout out to the trendsetter. But um, you know, I'm looking at this thing, and you have this whole kind of context of a discussion around Drake being half white and half, I believe, Adolf. So you know, I don't know what his daddy actually is. We're gonna say Adolf. And being from Canada and then basically bastardizing large parts of ADOS culture as it has developed. And that's what Kendrick tapped into. But now we move into They Not Like Us and the tribute to Nipsey. Nipsey, who's a, a retreat. And I don't know if people understand. You had trans out there saying they not like us. You had Latinos out there saying they not like us. You had Filipinos out there saying they not like us. And Kendrick wasn't going to correct none of them. Can I get to it? I just want to talk. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that show and give you back some of the context of the discussion. For a lot of y'all that ain't here, there's an east side of LA and there's a west side of LA. I showed you in in a prior show, I think it was about Issa Rae or somebody. There's a lot of West Side folks that like to touch on that East Side. Kendrick's show was Easty. It had a lot of Easty in it. He, he shouted out Nickerson and Compton. It's a lot of folks that don't go on Avalon that love that show and then don't go to that family reunion over there on Compton. I want to talk. But I really want to start off talking about the perception of they not like us versus the political call to action that was missing. You had Kendrick Lamar dressed up similar to Tupac. And for those people that want to know what I'm saying, go Google it. And he performed they not like us. And he performed it five times back to back. Was it a good performance? Yeah. But was it a political movement? Hell no. In fact, I believe it diluted the whole they not like us message that initially was supposed to come off of it. And I'll read some of the lyrics in a second about Drake and light skinnedness, Nicole Hannah Jones and light skinnedness and uh, Issa Rae and her her being anchored and being Senegalese. And it ain't just that they like, I'm sorry. It's also that they parent white. I'm not here to judge nobody dating or marrying somebody else. But what I am here to say is, if your mama white or your daddy white, maybe you shouldn't be writing that 1619 or rapping like you from the deep south and ain't had nothing else exposed to you. I want to talk today. And I want to get into the discussion of Kendrick Lamar's pop-up and contextualize how you can bastardize a, a movement and a message and end up in a place where they not like us mean like everybody is us so there ain't no they to even talk about where you get to the point where somebody who did not admittedly know who tupac was when he died which is what Issa Rae admitted in an article that i showed last week can be crip walking to enjoy the Kendrick show when they the they in the they not like us. They chanting it too. You had Kendrick bring everybody together from the different sets and take a photo. Am I against the photo? Not necessarily. But what I do want to talk about is 
what is your obligation to define who the they is? Because in LA, we got the class divide, the black middle class of Ladera Heights. We got the ethnicity divide, the uh, new immigrant African who, who, who basically now is contorting into a message of a long legacy of oppression and slavery. We got so many different levels, but don't nobody want to talk about it. It got so bad that during the show, somebody said Kendrick got Filipinos in the crowd telling Drake he can't say in, you know, the rest. Let me say it again. Kendrick had Filipinos in the crowd telling Drake he can't say in, I, you know, the rest. So we went from they not like us to everybody like us to everybody is us. What is this whole thing saying without a political anchoring? I just want to know. I want to know what the message was and who they is. Have we even dealt with us? Because I did do a political movement with Yvette Carnell called ADOS. And we did make a push with the census, the U.S. government, to get a category. And I didn't see Kendrick. If Kendrick really is about they not like us, he should be at that ADOS conference that Yvette is setting up. Everybody text him and ask, tweet him or whatever. Tweet him and ask him. Huh. We going to do the pop up and how the Filipinos saying Drake can't say the N word. If everybody is black now, what are Ados folk? We have an evolution and, I'm, and this is simplifying it, probably oversimplifying it, to be honest. But it is purposeful for this show. And what you saw, what you saw is that black men in the 70s were normal because there was so much wealth equality compared to the 30s, it was a goal to be normal. You could buy a house with a garbage job on the east side. You know, when I was talking to Rick, it's funny because his older brother was able to get the last part of the great access and he got a job because all those, uh, those projects, those used to be housing set up for like, I'm talking about the projects on the east side that over there, we talking about those used to be uh, uh, j like housing for factories, I believe. Well, by the time you get to people about Rick's age, which is my daddy age, we started moving into crack cocaine. And then what ended up happening, actually, is that there were no job opportunities in the same way. But before that, again, we're talking about the late 70s, before they privatized garbage uh, jobs and things of the sort, giving it to newer immigrants. That's actually what happened here in Los Angeles. A garbage man could provide for his wife and buy a home on a garbage man's salary with probably less than a high school education. But I, I think what that bread is a, a push towards really, really high value on just being normal. So you had this, this black man who was a normal black man. Was there cool pimps and things of the sort? Yeah, on the fringes. But black men strove to look normal. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm here, I'm here to just lay out some simplicity. We moved to the 90s. And in the 90s, there was this push to be cool, but we have the middle to the second half of, of mass incarceration. So it's to be cool and have some wealthy things. The rich and famous, the cribs, has indoctrinated black men with the desire to be cool and rich looking. Okay. The reason why I'm telling you this timeline is by the time we get to 2024, I believe, this is my view, that now it's just about being weird. You might cut off half your head. You might shave the top. You might put the top purple. You might put on fake dreadlocks. It is to be so weird that you're not accountable to anything. So what I'm saying that for is because what ends up happening with your chant, what chant am I talking about? That they not like us is that now it becomes whoever has a weird oddity. You say the other people ain't like us. It becomes a chat for the disenfranchised at any level. You got the trans man, they not like us. You got the Latino, they not like us. You got the Palestinian, they not like us. What about the fact that you anchored this in being ADOS? Again, go tweet him and see if he's going to be at that ADOS conference. If he's going to do something with this census. Oh, yeah, they already decided that the Middle East, North Africans have a category, but 
Black Americans, American descendants of slavery, we don't have a category. U.S. government decided that. They not like us, they not like us, they not like us is the chant. But we never define they and we don't really deal with us. But in the lyrics, we allude to slavery and chains. So it's clear we're talking about ADOS and we're talking about Drake. So we're talking about people that are not ADOS and that are likely either African or black and white. But we're not going to make that clear and we're going to peace out to Nipsey at the end. All right. All right. Who was a reach in, at least in part. Can someone tell me the call to action for this chant? In the chat, you're welcome to join. 310-388-3499 if you want to call in. Uh, taking all callers, 310-388-3499. But the chant is they not like us. But I just want to know, because we don't have a political education. We have, you know, again, I'm a middle-aged man that's highly educated. This really isn't for me. This content isn't for me. Parts of it I enjoy. I actually like to meet the Graham's part of the song better. But for each person is their own. But I just know once you go this route and you start talking about slavery and chains, I need you to hold accountable to that square because you already did the Wakanda soundtrack. All right. So while we was creating ADOS, Kendrick was doing the Wakanda soundtrack. Can someone tell me the call to action? People going to come in and say, what do you mean? What have you done? Who are you? We'll talk about that in a second. Or are we chanting they not like us until the people that aren't like us chant it too? Let me go back again. Kendrick got Filipinos in the crowd telling Drake he can't say the N-word. Okay. For the people that ask, what is a political call to action? I wanted to get specific. Here is an example in my testimony to the U.S. Census to create a proper category for American descendants of slavery, Black Americans. Right now, you don't exist. You don't really have a category. I believe it's because they don't want to give you the numbers because ADOS people are collapsed if you partition out the Black immigrants. And particularly if you take out like half white people that are getting their benefits through a white parent, just a collapsed group. So they decided that you're invisible. And you said it's OK because all you say is Black. So a call to action goes something like this. This is about two minutes. Just stay here if you just want to talk. I mean, Attorney Antonio Moore calling uh, as a, a person to testify as one of the lead experts on AB 3121, the California Reparations uh, Task Force Bill, and also a co uh, one of the creators of the ADOS terminology. Essentially, ADOS, American Descendants of Slavery, explicitly spells out a terminology that allows... Hold on, 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 hold on. Hold on, hold on. What is this man talking about? What is this talking? That is me testifying with the ADOS Advocacy Foundation, which represents you, that because the NAACP and the Urban League, they ain't talking about nothing, to the US government for them to count you. So while Kendrick talking about they not like us, we trying to say, who is us? And why you ain't told us who us is? And why we running around here letting everybody chant they not like us? Let's get back to it. Finally be able to recognize the differentiation between black people that were descendants of slavery here in America and, and the newly immigrated black population. I recommend that the group that is deciding to read the book by Todd Hamilton, Immigration and the Remaking of Black America. In that book, you get a better grasp on the amount of black population that came post say, 1975 and the black population that was here prior. Many of us believe we understand, but until you start reading those census data numbers, you really do not. In addition, in 2016, Color of Wealth report came out that specifically showed us the consequence of not understanding the impact of not having an ADOS category. In that report, they looked at about four or five cities Specifically looking at Los Angeles, what we saw is that the African Blacks had $152,000 hard while having $60,000 liquid. But in, when we in contrast that and looked at the U.S. Blacks, they had a, a mere $30,000 hard and $200 liquid. What we're having now is there's been an entire erasure of a population by the, by the fact that we have not created the category American descendants of slavery. In addition, I think that you cannot do the MENA category 
or proposal two without addressing American disabled slavery category four. I think that what you'll end up having is a conflict where people may fit into two categories at once. Um, I just wanted to also note that American descendants of slavery also uniformly fits with what the, what the current census is, is using for American Indians, where you have American place first, and then you have a terminology after. It is important to have uniformity because people beyond just the black population would look to that term to define the group as well. I just wanted to uh, lay, those, those, lay those specifics out, and that's my talk. So we talking again about Kendrick Lamar. I don't want to get too off track. They not like us. And we're dealing with the question of who is they and what is us. We thought we all understood because you said it in the lyrics. But when we looked in the crowd and then we looked at who's chanting and then we realized what was said after the song, maybe we all confused. She said she didn't know who Tupac was when he died. Go find it. I'm not lying. But she crib walking, mama and daddy that pulled her out the ghetto into Senegal in the damn 90s. We got a whole lot going on. And I'm just coming back to it because I asked the question earlier, can someone tell me the call to action for this chant? People will come here into this video and ask, and that's why I'm anchoring it, but what have you done? We've already talked about creating ADOS. We've already talked about the census and how the ADOS Advocacy Foundation pushed the census to, to recognize there's time to review this because African-American or whatever, Black, all this category, you basically have rendered 42 million people that come from slaves in America invisible. But also, I mean, I'm not guessing. I'm just going to play it for you. And that's why I'm saying the call to action matters, and I'm going to get right into the meat. But let me just play this from the person who triggered the California reparations discussion from this show. I want to talk about um, when I reached out to you and how that came about. I had only been in Dr. Weber's office for a few weeks um, at that time, and I was an intern. That's so wonderful. I was only going to be in Dr. Weber's office for eight weeks. And I had a conversation with the legislative director about what I wanted to do in my eight weeks and um, and said, you know, what do you want to get out of this process? And I said, I want to work on legislation and I want to see how the sausage is made. And they asked me what my legislation, um, what my legis legislative aspirations were. I immediately started talking about you. <laughs> I started talking about ADOS. I started talking about the um, reparative justice and reparative justice is something that is near and dear to me and I ask for their support to be able to present to them the studies that I had gotten from you. So from you. I pulled up your YouTube, I pulled up ados101.com and I began to have conversations in the Capitol about the work that you and Yvette had done. So I can't take credit for a lot of the information. I was just a facilitator of that information. I did some uh, some other research, um, but really, I'll tell you, it, I was I, I was really okay with that part of it. But when I reached out to you, I didn't know how you would receive that, and I remember right. So, part of this and part of that is to get back into what a political call to action looks like. Because if you're going to chant, they not like us. You have obligated yourself to move beyond just calling out Drake with childish like sayings about whatever little sexual acts he done done into a political call for all those manic people that were in that stadium. Because I believe that we've reached the point where wealth inequality is so bad, this is damn near like a developing country for large sections of the, of the, of the society. And ADOS people are part of that. And what happens is Nipsey dies and we got a, a, a procession and a thousand people in the street. Well, this is part of mania. What happens is Kendrick does this concert, but we're not doing no politics. He didn't stop that thing and bring up ADOS to present the conference or, or what we're going to do with the census. And how, because what we're doing is we're going to make they not like us a chant around not being from slavery, but being different. I want to talk because I'm talking different than everybody else. 
And I'm from LA, from LA. First thing Cube said off the camera, he was like, you LA to the motherfucker. I know, I know, I know that. I don't give a fuck. People could take this one how they want. But again, if you don't deal with the us part, you end up here where you're struggling with who should get reparations in a country that owes reparations to American descendants of slavery. Weber didn't watch enough of them YouTubes. Since 2018, the American descendants of slavery movement has been advocating for a specific ethnicity based on our lineage in support of this aim, as well as federal reparations program and a political agenda for black Americans. We created the ADOS Advocacy Foundation. Our foundation has already presented to the Office of Management and Budget. That is who controls the census. So y'all at a stadium chanting with a dude about they not like us with everybody else and they did nothing to make sure that you have a category and an identity in your own country. Somebody said he went to Compton College and gave a speech. We got the census. I don't care about that. Good, good for him. I'm saying to you that it is a moment where either you survive or you get on. And they saying get on. We are in the moment of mass wealth inequality and y'all can't get it. Your minds ain't right. You don't even know you don't count. You don't have no data on your own life. I want to get to it. I'm just talking. Mass immigration and wealth inequality requires a movement past color, black blackness, in defining the us before we get to the they not like part. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Kendrick Lamar and the They Not Like Us and the pop-up show and how everybody in America can say us and they at the same time and how that means the chant don't mean nothing. I want to talk. I want to lay the flames out because everybody going to say, damn, you being critical, but she didn't know who Tupac was when he passed because she had just came from synagogue and then she, now she crip walking and the doorway is this stuff. Let's get to it. Somebody said I should reach out to him. I'm not reach. I'm not here to kill him. I'm here to deal with the fact that if we not dealing with the politics, we not dealing with nothing. And I'm asking you or him, what's the political call to action? And I don't want to hear no black and brown and no people of color. What does that cost to you, career wise, if you go that route? But you already put it in the lyrics. Huh. I just want to get to it. I just want to get to it. Mass immigration and wealth inequality requires a movement past color in defining the us before we get to the they not like and an effort to dig deeper into each person's individual lineal truth and people's in life paymasters and loyalties. And people's in life paymasters and loyalty. Lineage, class, struggle, character. Y'all remember when I came up with that? What's your lineage? That's first and foremost. Y'all running around here and, and, you know, white oppression is real. You don't know if a white person was involved with slavery or they came from Armenia, but they all white. But you can have an African who family actually traded slaves and you don't know where to put them once they tell you that because they're supposed to go below whites. So, you got a person in your space and they tell you, I know my family traded slaves. They supposed to drop below whites. Oh, you ain't got no goddamn category for that. Because you ain't never done enough work to say the saying they not like us. And it was set up that way with this flat blackness that never evolved. I just want to talk. I just want to talk. Play that meet the grams and beat in the background. In your mind. What am I talking about? It is my view that black is now used as a black as a term and identifier is now used as a pass through or mutator. So it's either a pass through or a mutator. Let me explain what I mean. It is added to BIPOC, which is black Indian people of color to pass along the historical oppressions of ADOS 
to others. American descendants of slavery, people that were in chains and slaves here, to others. So Indians had like 20, 15, 20% slaves. They had the same slave rate ownership as white folk, but they second on the BIPOC. Okay. Black Indian people of color to pass along historical oppressions of ADOS to others. And it performs the same function with the category black women. So black women becomes a, a ethnic identity. And you have people like Mutali Nakunde, those people in the chat will know, who came here. Mutali came here in 2006, as I understand it, two years before Obama. That's 30 years after Jim Crow. What, what does she have to do with what we were oppressed by? And we don't know her lineal connection to anything. We have uh, Issa Rae, and I still ain't got no answers. I want to know about the Diop. Joe Issa Rae Diop. Diop connected to the Woolos. The Woolos were the main tra slave traders. I want to know, was your family involved? Because that will let me know whether we should have ever watched that show. Period. In my view. And I'm saying to you that black, as it's used right now, is a pass-through of oppression and a mutator where it touches people and makes them one with you, and you don't even know the difference. So black is now used as a pass-through or mutator. It is added to BIPOC to pass along the historical oppressions of ADOS to others, and it performs the same function with the category black women taking someone that may have arrived 20 to 30 years after Jim Crow and tying them to Harriet Tubman and Fannie Lou Hamer. I was on Al Jazeera and I asked the question before she played Harriet, did her family trade slaves? And it's, it, she never answered. And, and you, you know, it's, it, the, the people that come here are the wealthy. So it, it's a possibility. And if that's true, and she, she should have answered before she played the role, do you know how crazy that is? You got people here, and I'll read stories in a second, practicing slavery in 2024 that according to these California bills and, and oh, so many other people that messed this up, these local bills would get reparations. Can we talk? But we dealing with they not like us and we not really defining us or they, and it becomes a chant about being other, any other. Taking someone that may have arrived 20 to 30 years after Jim Crow and tying them to Harriet Tubman and Fannie Lou Hamer while also shattering the group along gender lines. Black is also, this is where it's a mutator, now being used as a sort of social mutator for people that are anchored in being white or Senegalese like Hannah Jones or Issa Rae, where we fail to identify their anchoring. Issa Rae, favorite food, Senegalese, her husband, Senegalese, she lived in Senegal. She, her name, Joe Issa Rae Diop. Don't get lost in the Issa Rae. This is a whole Senegalese woman. And you done watched Insecure as if she could tell you about black love. She ain't know who Tupac was when he died. Where we fail to identify their anchoring and privileges, nor how they are used to cover the in life cost of being an American descendant of slavery with no parental carve out. For those people that struggle, 310-388-3499. Please call in if you want to speak. This chart will show you. So most black immigrants didn't come here until after like 80. That's damn near reaching up on 20 years after Jim Crow. 85 and all that. Look at it. Poop. It jumps right here. This is less than a million people until like 85 of all black immigrants. At that time, the country probably like 190 million people. It's probably like 25, 30 million ADOS, and, and, and you're talking about negligible until 1990 or so. What are we even talking about that everybody is saying? They, no, 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 no. We talking about a Filipino saying the N-word. What about an African? Or what about a Jamaican saying it? Chanting it in the damn crowd. Because most of, and to tell y'all, y'all the people that don't live here, LA's ADOS population been done gone. Then went back to the South, you know, because they came here from, like my family, from Mississippi or Alabama. Costs got too high. They done got back out of here. We have a strong Belizean, Jamaican, Nigerian population. So between the Armenians, the Latinos, and then the Black folks that's Belizean, Jamaican, and, and, and Eritrean in the crowd, it might not be but 3% ADOS in there, 12%. In that whole thing, 15%. So... When we talk about this thing, why are we talking about slave chains in the song? We are weaponizing Adolf for a personal benefit to get back to a, a kind of a, a little rap beef. And we are not dealing with the consequence of being Adolf and the political call to action you owe us for creating this chant around being Adolf. 
and your family will suffer the consequence. I want a deal. I'm just having a discussion. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, how are you? What's up? Give me your take on it. Well, yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, that is easy. You can be saying that just like it's for you. Hey, we we can't hear you that good. Are you talking into a, a Bluetooth or the phone? Is that better? Go ahead. Let me see if I can hear you. Oh, is that better? Yeah, that's better. Go ahead. All right. So <clears throat> I don't appreciate him doing this whole people of color. I don't appreciate him 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 backing off of even though he even though he can go through and say you know AR. I don't, I don't, I don't appreciate him him doing this whole thing. And actually, the, the truth about it is, is that he's a great example of the stuff that I've been talking about for the last four years of what I've been seeing out of Negroes coming out of California. Mm -hmm. the and, and the refusal to be self-centered and the refusal to admit that you're AOS and you want to be everybody else. You want to champion everybody else. You want to allow everybody else to just disrespect you. As a matter of fact, You'll chime in with the disrespect if you see another 81 person calling out the fuck shit. Mm. I hear you. I hear you. My, my thing is, let me say this. There's parts of Kendrick that I can uh, I can appreciate, but I think there also represents parts of the scatteredness of this moment in this race. Because, you know, you go from the Wakanda movie with Black Panther to They Not Like Us, but then it's really to take pokes at Drake. But we need a political call to action. Because we don't need, I, Drake is a, a representation of a whole bunch of folk. We can't have the other folk that are just like Drake getting a chant, they not like us. You got whole people that are the same as Drake chanting the chant. And he, and he ain't said nothing. I, I just, you know, give me a, give me a last take on it. So, uh, yeah. I'm just going to say again, like I've been saying for the last four years, if folk like him, that's the reason why I don't spend my time talking to ADOS. Talking to ADOS in California is like talking to a brick wall. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate you. Man, thank you. You you really said it all. You know, um, and that's somebody who live here, so stop it. Uh let me let me let me I'm gonna come to the callers. I got a few in there, but to frame this, what I'm saying, because it sounds like you just being uh against Africans. Read this. Burlington County couple convicted of forced labor and other federal crimes. Unimaginable suffering. New Jersey couple forced women to work in the home. That ain't enough. They kept these people as slaves. So in America in 2024, or in and around that time, this Nigerian couple, and you can't tell me they're the only ones, they had slaves in America. Now we have to also ask, if they practice this here, what is their lineage? Where do they fit? We don't even have a dialogue for us. We ain't even ready for that shit because we didn't do the OMB. We didn't get the numbers. We didn't create an identity. All we talking about is being black. U.S.-based Nigerian couple faces 20 years in prison for labor trafficking case. They had whole slaves. These defendants engaged in egregious bait and switch, luring the victims with false promises of a life and education in the U.S. and instead subjected them to grueling hours, physical abuse, and psychological abuse. Forced labor and human trafficking are abhorrent crimes that have no place in our society. So what am I saying? Wouldn't they be chanting it too because they black and that's what we going by African descent? I just want to talk. I just want to have the discussion and frame it. The United States Department of Justice announced after a two-week trial, federal jury in Camden, New Jersey, found a Nigerian couple, uh, Bolarina and uh, the both Bolarinas, 67 and 50, from Burlington County, guilty of forced labor and other related crimes. Slavery. The couple, aged 67 and 50, coerced two individuals into domestic labor, including child care, between 2015 and 2016. 
So they had slaves here. Victim one arrived in the U.S. in 2015, confiscated her passport, coerced her through threats of physical harm to her and her daughter, verbal abuse, isolation, and constant surveillance, similar with victim two. But that ain't just them. Couple who kept vulnerable Nigerian woman as domestic slave in East Belfast to be sentenced next month. This is why I'm asking, what is the political call to action for chanting, they not like us? Maybe somebody on the call can give me that answer. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? What's your name? Where you calling from, caller? Hello. Adriana from Alabama. Give me your take. Um, I do agree with everything they're saying. It also goes along with that um school too. Um, people were talking about it and celebrating, and that discussion came up about who should be celebrating and Come on. the like different liberation around the earth or around you know. In the diaspora, we don't celebrate like Haitians or, you know, take over the celebration or talk over. But some people were trying to say us differentiating was a problem. Like the fact that Adolf people were saying, this is our holiday, or, you know, bringing that up and saying, hey, this is where you keep that out, and kind of cutting that out for ourselves. To them, that, that was like seen as competition. I, I, I understand. I've seen the same thing. I mean, I don't know how you chant they not like us and you haven't established who us is, let alone who they is, and then it gets to a point where it's just about being other. I'm just trying to understand. Maybe I, right. And then there's no political call to action and, and people will be like, that's not his job. Well, then don't say slavery in your damn lyrics. I'm a middle-aged highly educated man. Bringing up the thing with, Go bringing ahead. up Atlanta and bringing up our specific struggle and using that. It's not about Kendrick fans, it's about eight of people who suffered at the hands of this country and we are trying to curse that out and he used that as a weapon against straight. And Look, he can, but you have to say, okay, well this is who stand I'm on that about. square. Stand on that square. Let me read the lyric. Let me read the lyric that yeah. we're talking about. They not like us, they not like us, they not like us. Okay, we're gonna chant that 17 times. I don't know. Once upon a time, all of us was in chains. All of us was in chains. Okay. All of us was in chains. Homie still doubled down, calling us some slaves. Atlanta was the Mecca building railroads and trains. All right. Nonetheless, again, I'm a middle-aged, highly educated man. I don't know. But I am saying that you have an obligation once you do that to be at this census and so that we can do a us. And even, and even further than that, Drake was America. Last thing you want to say to the audience? No, I appreciate everything you're doing. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to contextualize it because I can, you know, again, for the young folks, y'all gonna do what y'all do. But when you older than me and out here, and then you grew up boule with the debutante, and then you out here crib walking, come on, stop it. Go ahead. Call it what's your name? Where you calling from? Call it what's your name? 917. I'm there. All right, call back. Oh, you hear me? Oh, sorry. Got you. Go ahead. You got me? Yeah, I got you. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, I, uh, my name is Amy. I'm from New York City. Give me your take. All right. Um, I I found you on Twitter about your with your second and fail post. I thought it was really mm -hmm. My thing is, I don't think I think his the this song in general were the call to action. Like, if you listen to his previous song called um, Euphoria, right? Mm -hmm. When he was talking about the things that he said to Mike Padraig, or what he hates about Drake, he ended it with the line, it's not what I'm feeling, it's what the culture is feeling. I feel like a lot of it, a lot of what's wrong is that people, like you said, it has to find themselves. And it's not really up to, like, one man to, like, really, it, it needs to be, like, a collective. Like thing. I think that's what he's trying to do. Like everything he's been saying is things that have been like circling like around in the community. 
but like it's not really ever present. It took someone like with a known platform to say everything that what a lot of these people have been feeling, but it still takes a lot more than one person to do anything about it. You get what I'm saying? I hear you, but I just push back. Right? I push back because I don't know if th- this movement was on the cover of the New York Times. Like I like like I, I'm not saying I'm saying that it was that. So now he got to join in when it's the hard part. You can't just do the part to help you get Drake like like ex excommunicata. I need you to come here when the New York Times is here and saying we don't get no identity to say nah. I'm Kendrick. They not like us. I'm willing to stand on this line. And what I feel is y'all build a world where the celebrities don't got to stand nowhere. He did the Wakanda soundtrack. Go ahead. But I think Ken, 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 why, I've, I've had this thought for a while now, but can an Adolf American really have any type of, like, powwow, any type of celebrity or, like, fame attached to it? Like, would we ever see someone with any type of influence without the fame or the entertainment side attached to it? That's, like, I think, like, the biggest part of it. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I hear you. I, I think somebody just, I'm going to let you go. Thank you, caller. I'm just gonna say what's the, that I felt like a rap beef tied in with the ADOS culture. While we just came off of the government just told us that we don't get no identity. Let me be clear. I'm not guessing. The ADOS Advocacy Foundation petitioned the U.S. government for you and your children and your grandmama to have an identity because you don't have one right now. Black is not an identity. It is a mutator and a transformer, a pass through. What happened is they told us we don't get no identity. You just got to be black, which means that you don't get no information to show like what the consequences of being ADOS is. But they told us that Mina does. I need you to stand on that square if you're going to talk about slavery in the song. That's my feelings. Everybody can have their own. Call it. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hello? Give me your take. Call it. What's your name? Where you calling from? Yes, my name is uh, Juanita. I'm calling from Atlanta. Give me your take, Juanita. And the whole thing is, the whole thing is, I don't, I really don't think he realized what he was doing, saying something tanky. That's why you I need a political education. The, uh, That's why you need a political education. I agree. And what he really, uh, what he really did, uh, what he was really, what he was really saying, this is no excuse because it's. His responsibility, though they is and no us is, and to emphasize that and stand on that square. What he said, he allowed once again celebrities to go out here and do stuff without the proper education and the temple of fortitude. He just allowed it to get appropriated by everyone because that was easier for him to do. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Juanita, for making that clear. I'm saying that celebrity at this point will take a concept and then mutate it for their own personal like interest. And you be thinking they talking about you and they done moved the ball where they done messed up what you was talking about. I don't need nobody that's going to make they not like us have not a clear they or a clear us. So all we got left is not like. Come on. Come on. But at least we got somebody crib walking that didn't know who Tupac was when he died because she was in synagogue when the riots happened. Can we talk about it? Can we get to it? And let me tell y'all something else. Juanita, why I got you here? Because I love talking to you. This Miss Juanita. So LA developed weird. And I found out during the during the doc freeway cracking the system. We used to have like black folks that was professionals amongst like regular people. So they had like role models. Well, what happened in the late 70s, and I'm not giving you a representation from me. This is from a source that live up in Ladera Heights. They got together in some kind of cohort and decided to brain drain and live off to their own. In and of itself, is that problematic? Possibly. But when you add the second element, which is their children, then started to want, as a hip hop drop rose up, to be part of a culture that they were not part of. She didn't know who Tupac was when he died, admittedly, and she out here crip walking, which came out of a lot of people's death and struggle. Now, I say this to say this right here, because they not like us. This is the same thing for her. 
grew up in Iowa with the white mama and all that. It's the same thing for her. And I, I, I want to show it to you guys because many of you guys watch this thing on the show or whatever Kendrick's thing was, the stream, and you saw him say Nickerson Gardens and you saw him say Compton and you saw him say Watts and whatever else he said. All that is over here. All of that, let me give you a map. A lot of these people that you see who live in Culver or in Ladera Heights, they don't come past this red line. So why is that important? So this is a gang map. We first must deal with the fact of the celebration of tragedy. The fact that we don't want to deal with how this all ties into gang culture and what gang culture did in the black community. Leave that on the table. You can deal with that when you feel like it. But in addition, what you see is that folks living in here they go shop at the Fox Hills Mall at the Trader Joe's. We had a Walmart on, on Crenshaw. I'm telling you guys because y'all not from here. We had a Walmart on Crenshaw. And they closed our Walmart. You can go Google it. They talked about theft, but a lot of it was people up here didn't want to go down there and be next to them. People that up here wanted to go to the Wal go, go to the Target over in Fox, the, or, or, or wherever. Go West Side, Culver City, Best Buy. That's your right. But I don't want to see you at the Kendrick concert when it get real easty at the end. So what happens is they got a whole uh, Nike outlet. I've been down there three times in the last four, three months. You got people that won't even go to that Nike outlet because it's right in there. It's in the, in the sweet spot. And I'm saying this to you to say what we're seeing is a is, is a confusion amongst this group as people want a little taste of the ghetto. So then they, they will never do a family reunion with the people or a family a get together on Thanksgiving with the people at the end of that Kendrick Lamar concert. But you damn sure think that it's entertainment. Tell me the truth about it. I just want to well, talk you know, about it. Go ahead. We unfortunately can't because ain't no people with like people that are and and they feel like they above their roots and they better than the people living on the other side of that line. And, and what they don't realize is that they they only keep taking away to see it's not like you on the other side of that line. Because they just they're no credit and they overextend it. But also uh, but also also they don't understand it, the importance of lending it. And also, and also, also let me say let me say let me say one minute. They don't even realize who and what they are and where they're at in order to even be angry about it because either they boule or they boule adjacent and want to be boule, and boule people don't go across that line because they think they're better than everybody. And that's what's so that's, interesting that's, is I mean, that I, I grew up with people like it, that. I mean, that's, that's, that's how they get there. And that's what's so interesting, Juanita, Juanita, do you, what, what's interesting about L.A. that a lot of y'all just now are experiencing, because for a long time, y'all houses didn't appreciate. We have a quirky property tax law where these people didn't learn the consequence of appreciation. I've talked about it in other shows. But then in addition, they saw appreciation that didn't mirror white folks, but it damn near matched it. And so they just sent their kids on the, on the, on the gangs in the house out to like private schools far out. My point is to say this. They got kids who they never let get on the on the RTD bus that now want to crib walk because that's the cute thing to do. And what I'm coming back to is the reality of creating a, a, a visual for people that ain't really from here about a version of yourself that ain't never happened. Let's go. We crib walking and we ain't exactly, no crib walking. Because now the crib walk is a damn game. They, they don't understand where that Crip Walk came from. And I blame these rappers, old ass rappers for that, like Snoop Dogg and that. Come on. Even race thinks she's doing the damn dance. They don't know what that really means. They don't know where it really came from. She got no concept of that. And instead of us catching her over it, we laugh and clap and say, yeah, it's just the girl. That's our fault. That's Adolf's fault. For being okay with that little skinny help for doing that. Come on, come on. Any last thing you want to say to the audience on the on the, on the Kendrick show? Because I got a whole queue. I want to give everybody a chance. Go ahead. Last thing, give it to me. I, I mean, to me, okay, to me. Until Kendrick Lamar came out and said, "Look, I don't want to be no part of this." 
vote if you ain't got no Jewish blood. Basically, unless you convert or something. Come on. If you got Jerry, you can't get in that damn boat unless you're not Jerry. So we let every every dog on Bongo dog in America get an alcohol. And that's what got us screwed up. Come on. That's what got that's what the problem is. And until we learn the importance of being in our own group and just not being uh 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 Unhospitable by telling the rest of you, man, no, this is our group. You get over there, it's your group. And that's what, let me, let me, let me. Well, we're going to stay messed up. And, and this is, and this we're is. We're going to stay messed up because we're going to love. We're going to love all these people to step on our necks. Let me let it go. And the white folks will allow them to step on our necks because they, they are for a sensible thing. But they will not be more than we are. Juanita. Well, and, and I mean, and, and so we understand that. There ain't nothing wrong here, right? Juanita, look, look, I, I, you done, you done lit the line on fire. I appreciate you calling. I want to let other people get in here. You absolutely right, though. I'm gonna let you go. Thank you for calling. The thing that's so interesting is she was spot on, and what's ended up happening is that is your obligation when you decide to do this song, because this ain't just a song. It's kind of like you know, I'm black and I'm proud because that back then it was almost all ADOS people. I showed you already on the chart. It was a call. You're calling people to action. So that means that you got to connect it and you got, you are. Don't tell me I got to call Kendrick. He did the damn song. Call me. I'm saying to you that she got to call the ADOS Advocacy Foundation and figure out what is the political obligation for what I just done set off. And am I ready for that? Because that means I might lose some of these fans or am I going to just do a chant for the others? And then anchor it in ADOS as black as a pass through. Can I talk about it? I'm really doing BIPOC. I want to talk. I want to get to it. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yes, I'm calling from uh, California, uh, San Jose. From California, let me say this to you. I got this thing on the on the, on the on the on the screen. I know you probably got your own words, but I want you to speak to it coming from California. Yeah. And it was a, a black lady that's a Democrat, and she put up a, a, a image of the Underground Railroad had a lesser known route that a lesser known route that fled to Mexico. Mexico refused to return any refugees that fled from slavery. And understand the source is African archives. That ain't the U.S. history. That ain't the History Channel or. Uh, that ain't uh, uh, Al Jazeera. It's African archives. And from that, she decided that we was all wrong on immigration. We don't know if it was 10 people or 100 people because she didn't do the work. But I know that I found an article that literally said, and I'm, I know I'm jumping up. I want you to come to it and you can mix this in. Anti-black racism in Mexico has been historically perpetuated by the legacies of slavery and the existence of racist colonial era racial caste systems and a modern nationalist myth that has associated true Mexicanness, misogyny. That means mixed race, a racial and cultural mix of indigenous and Spaniard. People of African de descent were, were systemically excluded from performing certain trades such as tailoring or carpentry. So that refuted, I put that under her tweet. All I'm saying is that I don't understand how we got here where you just throw black and brown in. I heard that's what happened during the concert. I didn't watch the whole thing where people don't really understand the consequence of establishing they not like us and not really understanding we didn't do the, the OMB. You don't get to have a day not like us. You didn't do the work. You can come to the conference and help pass out some damn potato salad, Kendrick. But I, I know that for us to have a us, we got to get the census to recognize us. But go ahead. Give me your take on everything. Yeah, you know, so it's funny you said it because I, I saw that tweet uh, yesterday and I was talking to some friends about that. And it's interesting because I just reread uh, uh, Henry, Henry Louis Gates, uh, uh, his book, uh, Black and Latin America. And throughout that book, he pretty much goes over the major land countries that own slaves and how the descendants are treated now. And I found out Mexico, I think, imported something like 700,000. Mm -hmm. And to this day, they've engaged in erasure. There's a saying that says, keep the black grandma in the closet. And it's funny that you said as well, Karis one just uh, posted something on Instagram saying that without yeah. Latinos and Puerto Ricans, there would be no hip hop. So I just find it funny how a lot of Adolf's 
push themselves out of the narrative to erase themselves out of the narrative. It, 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 it's truly, it, it's sad to be honest with you. Well, that's, that, that's the consequence of having an invisible group. Meaning we don't really, like yeah. black is not an identity. It's a pass through. I keep, our social mutator. So then once you take that away, you're just dealing with somebody trying to fit in. Like a fit in person ain't gonna never yeah. be standing on that. Give me your take on the Kendrick. So. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny about that. Uh, I'm not from LA, but when I went to UCSD, I went to the uh, Santa Barbara. Uh, and I went to the scatteredness and yeah. that, that's the problem with uh, entertainers as a whole yeah. not having a focus and that's the problem of not having a political education. I don't know his education level. I think he's high school educated. Uh, I believe there's an importance to having advanced education. I'm not saying that that alone is enough but I believe that we're at a point where you really need to have your leaders highly educated and weaponized with information, data and resources. Now what is a problem is because we don't have a category we don't even have data. Most of y'all don't even know. We don't even know how bad black ADOS people are doing because they're really probably collapsed economically. And I, I, I don't I don't know what, where people go. I just gave you the real call to action that should have happened. But I'll tell you this. If it don't happen, you're in trouble. Call it, I'm going to let you go. I got a few other calls. Thank you so much. Let me try to get to a few other people that have been waiting. Call it. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 773. Hello? Hey, give me your take on it. Your name and where you come from? Peace, huh? My name is Denise, and I'm from Chicago. Okay. Go ahead. And, you know, we're going through a lot. Right? So it's really going through. In the midst of this multiculturalism, you know, Adolf people are really stuck. It's just the experience of and you know, multiculturalism is really about, and it's fortunate that our people. And I, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you this. Your phone is going in and out. Hello. Your phone is going in and out. It's, oh, Hello. It's Chicago, but I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you this though. What? Crazy. What? I want to ask. Did you want me to? So my first thing is technology has really allowed for capital to control much more uh, about how much access you have to information. I believe myself and Yvette have dealt with our channels being throttled for some time. We This ADOS thing reached the top of America. That's what's so interesting when the guy talked earlier. I was explaining. No, this was the top of America. Like, like the people that came from the Harvard thing, we don't know who exactly, but it's Harvard. And they put out a paper that bad. So you figure it out. What, what like what we we was in the in the New York Times and they still was they said that the lady said that more that she literally said more the editors the only other paper she had checked as much as this ADOS article the girl that wrote the article uh, for ADOS in the New York Times was about Palestine. So all the editors had to read it because it was that insane of a concept that we're not black we're really ADOS. But I come back to your question and say. When you first have that technological element, and then you also have 
this this new version of a celebrity that will sell anything because you got to go back before Billy D. Williams. Let's look at Billy D. Williams and there's probably a few others that as a pivot point. When Billy D. do the Colt 45 commercial, he a sellout. Before that, like artists was like, I'm not putting my song on that on a product and all that stuff. We got to a point where you could sell anything. And so now you're in an era where celebrity is really a doorway. And you see that with the gambling to sell you anything. And then you want that to be where your politics come from. Now, the last part is I think that there is a, a, a cyclical reality here. Wealth inequality hasn't been this bad since the 30s and during the Depression. I think rich people learned a lot the first time. I'm talking about in the last 100 years. So they learned how to control people by, without giving them nothing. So now they're just feeding you celebrity. So when that's what that was. This your pay for the next six months. Shut up. So you okay. can talk about Kendry. So I got I got, one more, I got one more question. Uh, what is your law advice on? So, for example, in Chicago, I know a lot of people. Well, look, caller, 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 caller. I don't want to get into uh, a bunch of questions. I answered the first one because I got a, a cue. Any last thing you want to say on the Kendrick thing? I'm so sorry. I just want our, our people who speak for Adolf publicly. Please be genuine and really get to the issues that that they're facing and speak out and say something. Acknowledge us. Acknowledge us for who we are. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. So a lot of people was talking about Kendrick ringing on the sets and all that. You know, and I'm not saying people ain't dealing with sets, and but it ain't like the 80s and the 90s. I'm saying that to say. And, and and I'm just coming back to the craziness of what we've done. We've commercialized things that are real heinous and have real consequences for families across this city. And I, I just really think that we went from ADOS in the song. And I'm talking about this right here. Once upon a time, all of us was in chains. Homie still doubled down, calling us. Some we went from ADOS in the, in the day not like a song to black in the promotion to POC, people of color, or BIPOC in the pop-up setup, to the abnormal in the chant. So anybody abnormal can say they not like us, it felt like, in that room. Kendrick not like us reminds us that culture vultures like academics and DJ Vlad built their platform by exploiting black trauma. Was it black trauma or ADOS trauma? Because that's, it ain't the same. Because then you got people that are, 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 Basically, not ADOS got here in about 2006 doing Harvard papers on me and Yvette and ADOS. Can we talk about it? Can I get to it? Go look it up. You got people walking around, listen to this, calling themselves kings and queens and at the same time saying they're revolutionaries. Y'all want to be royalties and rebels. Royalties and rebels at the same time. Can we talk about it? Can we get to it? I just want to come to you, and I got one last caller because I don't want to leave them off. They've been waiting for some time. Go ahead, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Jay from Florida. You, okay. You're the last caller. Give me your take on it, Jay. You got two minutes. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to admit, I enjoyed the show, and I'm not here to, you know, make excuses or anything like that.
Thank you for showing us what the big celebrities are, and they just doing what they supposed to do. Thank you for calling in and waiting to be called on. Thank you for your ad. And I, you know, there's parts of the show that I, I felt I liked as an LA person, but I'm more so dealing with the dichotomy of not dealing with what us and they is, and then tying it to Adolfness and then leaving it and then going back to black and brown and how there is no political call to action and how without that, you leave a lot of people hanging on the hook. This is Tone Talks. Please go to tonetalks.net, subscribe, share this video. Please support. Without you, I can't come bring these shows. Thank you.